Hello and welcome, this is Eagle Eye 621 and what you see behind me is the final version of my bamboo shaky farm. I was able to combine the convenience of a one switch on off, no need for replanting, and bring the water streams into the farm to allow for a much faster per crop rate. Give you some stats as I go stand in the water stream so you can see exactly how fast this is. And do note that this is one wide tileable. Every 15 blocks, though, you will need to have a couple of repeaters down to make sure that the signal can continue onward. And just to give you some stats, each one of these slices will produce about 6,600 per hour. That's enough to power a little over four and a half furnaces full time, or if you're using this for an XP farm, it's enough for 1,650 XP per hour. This farm is 30 slices, so it's just under 200,000 per hour, or 137 plus furnaces, or just under 50,000 XP per hour if you have enough furnaces and enough cactus or something like that to smelt. You can see just how fast my entire inventory filled up with this farm. And as I said, this can all be turned on and off with a single switch, which means that this is safe to leave the area. And that means you can unload this farm, come back, you don't have to worry about replanting. You just flip this back on or you have this connected to a comparator output to keep your super smelters filled with plenty of fuel. You, of course, don't have to go this big. You can do this in as many single slices as you want once you have the clocks set up, which are going to be the more important things. I will show you how to build this and show you the materials that you need in order to build that. And we have right here this is the per slice materials. It says it's about 65 to 6600 per hour. And this is again for one slice. Some of these things you can change out. The iron trap door, for example, you just need a block that can be updated by a redstone output that will be detectable by an observer and is waterproof. And then you will need some extra blocks and a little bit of extra water to set up your water stream at the very end. And then for all of the clocks and circuits and timing, these are the materials you're going to need. Again, you can swap some of them out. You can swap out a bunch of these smooth stone blocks for some slabs if you're going to build a larger one, which will save you a little bit on the lag. I do have a copy of these materials right here and let's get building. So start by coming up a little bit off the ground. And the first thing you're going to want to set up is your comparator clock. So we can set it up just like this. We're going to have our main toggle on that block. So we put our sticky piston here and when we flick this lever, the comparators will, the, excuse me, the observers will face each other and they will give you your signal. So we will take this now, go underneath, come out two on one side, and then come out three on the other, and make the turn. And some of this will look a little bit familiar based on the last one we did, but it'll change in a moment. I'm going to do three slices again for some convenience here, but you can do as many as you would like. Come up one, and then come up one on the other side. We're going to point our repeaters into these blocks and into these blocks, and then dust all the way around and all the way around here as well. And now, you can see that we have a nice clock. When we put our pistons, make sure these are not sticky pistons, they're regular pistons. They will be able to support the shaky sand. You can test that if you need to. And we're going to put some sand 
on one side and then put our dirt in the middle. We can plant our bamboo down and because this is not shaking you can plant it normally and not have to worry about it. We're going to put some blocks on top of that to prevent it from growing and then we're also going to put some blocks behind it and on those blocks we're going to grab another piston and put it facing into the top block right there and then we can work on our harvesting clock or we can work on our zero tick clock let's start with the zero tick pulse so we need to come out two blocks on this side so that the sticky piston and this does have to be sticky is one block up and back and then we also need to come one up and back from this one so that on this side it's going to be connected to the sand on this side there'll be an air block there and we do need to put it for each slice and we need to do that here as well and then we're going to put some sticky pistons facing up right behind it on both sides normally you would put a smooth stone down right here but in order to prevent the farm from activating too early we're going to wait on that and we're going to put an observer facing away like this and then we're going to get our iron trap doors and again you can replace these for those other blocks and place them on the front and do put them on the top doesn't matter as much on this side as it will on the other so we're going to do the same thing on this side we want to come away and then put our observers facing away and we're going to put our trap doors just like that now we're going to need to be able to take a signal from here and to transmit the signal we're going to attach it to this lever so we're going to come out and then we want to come one away to line ourselves up and we're going to on this side that's the side that has the sand on it so if you put your sand on the other side to be sure to mirror this we're going to have a repeater on two ticks that is important it does have to be on two ticks and then we're going to put a redstone torch right there and we're going to point a repeater into that and we're going to put some dust here to connect this and then we're going to come out like this and also put our redstone dust down and then we can take our observer and point that into the dust just like that now we're going to do something very similar on the other side as well. We're going to come out this way. We want to make sure that we are two away so that we can help line ourselves up. On the same row where you have your repeaters, we're going to put an observer facing just like that. And then we can come across and put a redstone torch facing it and then we're going to come around and put our dust on this side we'll get to that side as well but we also do want to make sure that we complete this circuit so we're going to put our redstone dust down like this and then we're going to put our observers facing into that dust so it looks like that and we can put our smooth stone blocks on there in a second but let's work on our harvesting clock first so we're going to use this to make a little bit of an elevator for ourselves right here and just come up a bit and they don't have to connect exactly the same but you do want to use your half slabs so that the signal can come up and come through and these do have to be top half slabs 
then we can get rid of some of these guiding blocks and now we can complete our dust to make sure it is covering the block that does have the redstone torch on both sides and then we can bring our signal up and you'll see that it is connecting up and then in order to have a clock we're going to need to connect the clock to this redstone line which is sitting on top of our harvesting pistons and we're going to set up a one redstone clock which is a two game tick clock and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take first we need to know where we want this to line up to and we want this to line up to this observer it's going to pulse a couple of times as we do this and that observer is going to be looking at a repeater now that's actually going to be facing in the wrong direction we're going to need to put a repeater facing this way into a full block we can use half slabs for the rest of these you can use full blocks if you want half slabs will be a little bit less on the lag and then we're going to have an observer pointing straight up next to it so it's looking up and then we're going to point our repeater into that direction on top of this observer and then the other repeater is going to face in the other direction and we're going to put dust around like this and what we're going to do for this last one is we're going to get a sticky piston with a full block and we're going to use this smooth stone full block here and that will be ready to push into this and when it pushes onto this you'll see that it will create a nice clock and this is a two game tick or one redstone tick clock and when you pull this away the clock turns off and that's how we're going to manage our harvesting system having an on and off switch now we can also start adding some blocks to hem in the crops and we are going to get ready to add some water so let's make sure that we add our blocks behind this these don't have to be glass obviously they can be whatever full blocks you want so that we can come out one past this we're going to do the same thing on this side as well we're going to put our blocks here to make sure the crops don't come flying out of the farm one passed again and that way you can start to make your water stream so we come down one more and over excuse me on this side come out this way and come out this way come out this way and do be sure to come up at least one above where that stream will be so the crops don't skate across the top we can get our fences and you just need something that will block the water but not block the crops open those and speaking of the water we can put our water in here hit boxes let me and let that water carry the items to wherever it is you need them to go now in order to get the water in on this side and also to place the last remaining blocks we want to make sure that we do this in sequence in order to be correct on the side where the crops are going to get pushed which is the side where your collection system is we're going to take our smooth stone full blocks and put them one above where the sticky pistons are and on this other side we're going to put them on that same row of the sticky pistons and now we can come and put in our water we can temporarily put down some blocks just to make this a little bit easier and then add your water stream right where the bamboo is right next to that 
and then break those temporary blocks or this whole thing will break when you turn it on. And if we've done everything correctly, what you'll see is that when we flick this lever, this clock right here, which is a one game tick clock, will turn on, which will start these pistons firing back and forth. Because we have this on a slight delay, the sand will get pushed into where the dirt is on a zero tick, meaning these crops will not break and it will start shaking every time. At the same time, the signal is going to travel up this way and set off our two game tick clock or our one redstone tick clock to start the harvesting system. And part of the zero tick will make these blocks get stuck up in the air one and pull these blocks down one, which will allow the water streams to connect and you will see the whole farm kick into action. And you saw the blocks dropped, the harvesting pistons started firing, the sand got pushed in and is shaking, fast growing these bamboo. It's getting pushed into our water stream that we have right here. This clock activated, which is what activated this harvesting mechanism. And the whole thing can be turned off again by flicking this lever. And as you can see, everything shut down, you can leave the area, you can unload the farm and not have any problems. And when you are in need of some additional bamboo, or when your super smelter is running low on fuel, or your XP farm needs to be turned back on, you flick it again, and the whole thing kicks into action. Now in order to make this work for sugarcane, you do need to sacrifice one of these spots in the middle and put a bottom half slab and waterlog that and then deactivate these zero tick pistons. You do have to change up the clocks a little bit. I'll probably do a follow up video showing you how to properly set up the timings for the sugar cane as this clock is not ideal. But in terms of bamboo, this will likely be the final design unless there is some new crazy tech discovered. Each one of these slices giving you about 6,600 per hour, one wide tileable, extend it as far out as your computer can handle, and when you are overrun with bamboo, turn it off. And then just because it is extremely satisfying after all of the updates, the patches, the unpatches, the new developments, the new tech, turn it on one more time. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a like, maybe even share it with one of your friends. And for more videos like this, do be sure to subscribe. Thanks for stopping by.